the Carbon County John Doe, identified as Rogers Lee Ellis. A man was found in an area that I'm really familiar with and is probably one of the most beautiful areas of Montana, in my opinion. Before we dig in, I want to give you a little bit of background on this area. Red Lodge is a mountain town, and its only real street is Main Street, like many of the small towns in Montana. In this case, there are about 10,000 people who live in Carbon County, and the main city of that county is Red Lodge. It's beautiful, but it's a very expensive town. It's an area where people normally go to ski or fish, camp and hike, and there's lots of little touristy shops like Pizza at Bogart's and unique collectibles often made in Montana. It's also really close to a lot of areas where someone could end up and not be found. Unfortunately, it's a great area to get rid of someone. It is a zigzag of roads and lots of mountains. There's a lot of frequently covered paths and there are little side roads all over the place. In June of 2004, a hiker would discover the skull of a human about 15 miles south of Red Lodge. A search would find a femur and a pelvic bone. Since so little was found, it was pretty limited as to what they could even know. They thought he was likely between 15 and 32, and they were able to extract some DNA. But this isn't the type that we talk about now, the type that genealogy is based on. However, if his family had submitted their DNA to CODIS through the NamUs website, he would have been found a lot earlier. So if anybody is missing a member of their family, make sure that DNA is submitted there. You can see in the links below this video, links to different things you can do with DNA to help identify John and Jane Doe's, whether it's someone you're missing personally or not. In this case, they actually thought that he was female. The recreations were obviously completely wrong, and then new ones were submitted. In 2022, with the assistance of the U.S. Department of Justice, the FBI, and NamUs, as well as the Missoula Sheriff's Office, helped the Carbon County Office to submit to Othram Labs. Othram has come up with more than any other labs in the recent year for identifications covered by this channel. They did it again through genetic genealogy, and they gave Rogers Ellis his name back. While his name was actually Rogers, he went by the name of Roger, and he was born in Wisconsin Rapids in 1954. It would turn out that while he was found in 2004, he had likely been there for 30 years. In 1976, Roger was facing some legal issues because of a marijuana possession arrest, heading to a state where, ironically, marijuana would be legal by the time he was identified. Roger was so in fear of legal consequences that he told his family he was going to leave to avoid jail, suggesting he might not return. So when he didn't return, they didn't know what to think. It's not hard to believe they might think he was out there living his own life. But sadly, he wasn't. They believe now that he hitchhiked from Wisconsin in December of 1976, traveling with someone who ended up bringing him to Montana and dumping him off while they probably traveled on their way. Currently, the sheriff's office needs to help trace Roger's travels back to 1976. If anyone has any idea at all what happened to Roger or where he was, please call the number on your screen. Rogers Ellis was missing for 46 years and an unidentified John Doe for 18. The Long Beach John Doe, identified as Kenneth Williams, at about 4.30 a.m. on June 3rd, 1978, a young male was found facing the ground in a prone position at the intersection of Division and Corona Street in Long Beach, California. He was unresponsive and, after emergency personnel came to the scene, he would be pronounced deceased. Later, it would be stated that he'd OD'd. It was announced that he'd likely also been thrown from a car. However, an autopsy would later change the cause of death to asphyxiation. None of this, however, helped with who he was. It was clear he had likely attended some kind of party or event, possibly at a local bar, as he had a paid stamp on the top of his hand. The confusing part of this was that he was clearly below the drinking age, which at the time was 18. 
Internet sleuths had been trying to figure out who the man was, and they would suggest Randy Kraft as who possibly took his life. He's believed to be responsible for 16 young men from 1973 to 1980, and that number has suggested to be as high as 80. The articles I'm seeing speak a lot about this theory, but absent any proof, that's the most I'm going to say. They knew the man had hazel eyes, a slender build, and freckles. It would turn out he was three years shy of the 18-year drinking age. Time would go from 1973 all the way to December of 2022. Forty-four years, his family would go without knowing what happened to him. Turns out he was missing from Le Puente, California, and he was found in Long Beach, about 30 miles away. I'm not sure if he was officially reported missing. The people at the time, when he was found, believed he was possibly a transient. So it's possible they didn't know for sure that he went missing. I will provide an editor's note if anything more comes up on this case. The police would confirm that Kenneth last attended Sierra Vista Middle School in 1977, and he was enrolled in Fairgrove Academy on August 18, 1977. He last attended school on October 27, 1977. He was found on June 3, 1978, which means he likely wasn't in school half of that school year. It's possible that he was a runaway. Kenneth Nevada Williams went unidentified for 44 years. Had he lived, he would be 59 today. The Pickaway John Doe, identified as Robert Mullins. Robert Mullins was 21 when he went missing between November of 1988 and November of 1989. He was also only 5 foot 3 which is an unusual height for a man. And there is a reason I mentioned this before anything else, because it was this fact that would hamper his identification for years. In 1991, hunters would locate the remains of a woman that was 5'1 to 5'4, who was discovered in a shallow grave. They believed her to be Native American, and for the following 21 years, up until 2012, when her remains were tested, they were looking for someone of the wrong sex. It wasn't until 2012 the DNA was done and they would discover that she was a he. They had been searching all those years based on an incorrect assumption, misunderstanding all of the facts, all based on height. But now they had the basics correct, and there was hope that the very thing that impacted the incorrect identification as a woman that this one specific fact might help identify him. Yet there were no men listed within his high range, so it still didn't lead to his name. In 2019, they requested assistance extracting DNA for advanced testing. This would then go on for nearly a full year. On November 1st of 2022, which is exactly 31 years from the discovery of his remains, authorities would believe they finally knew who the man was and the announcement was made in December of 2022. The Attorney General, Dave Yost, would say it well. What a tragedy to die unknown, to not have a name to put on a memorial. Today, that circle closes. If anyone has any information, please help give Robert Mullins the one remaining thing he deserves the most, and help identify who did this. Robert Mullins was 21 when he went missing. It would take two years for his remains to be found, and another 31 to discover his name. He went unidentified longer than he spent alive on earth. Had he lived, he would be 54 today. 
Thank you so much to everybody commenting, even with just an emoji. It really has made a big difference. The current goal for the channel is 20,000 subscribers, but we aren't even halfway there as I record this. So if you enjoy the content here and you're not sure, take a peek to see if you're subscribed. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. Thanks everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other.